Hello and welcome to Colred Plays Raid Shadow Legends. I am Colred. Thank you for joining me. So it feels like these days in Raid, there is a constant stream of champion training tournaments and events. Now, there is an upside to this barrage of champion training, which is that one, I think the rewards are generally very good. And two, it encourages us as players to focus on developing food champions and building more six stars than we might otherwise. And that helps with our accounts progression. But the dark side, the downside of these constant champion trainings is one, I think it leads to more player burnout. And then two, it's very time and resource intensive, which may make you feel like you don't have those resources or time to devote to other objectives you may have in the game. Additionally, and this is maybe the worst part for me, is that these champion trainings are typically folded into larger events. For instance, fusion and fragment events, or like the current champion training tournament, the Titan event that is ongoing. So if you want to complete the Rathalos Blademaster Titan event and get those Rathalos souls, you probably have to do at least part, if not all, of the current champion training tournament. And then you're going to get one or two days off. Then you're going to get hit with another champion training that, again, you probably can't avoid. Now, as a result, I think it benefits every single player in Raid, regardless of your account progression, to develop your own method for easily, quickly, and efficiently completing champion training. You've probably heard about the brew trick that happens in the tavern, putting XP onto food champions in order to get more champion training points. Now, I will give you my version of the brew trick today in this video, but I'm also going to talk about several other methods that you can use to get XP onto champions, and you can figure out the combination that best works for you so that you have a comfortable, easy go to method to complete these champion training tournaments and events. I think it's going to be a good video. I hope it's going to be helpful for you. Let's get started. Just a quick reminder, I live stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. My next live stream will be this Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, where my editor, whose name is Sun, and I will be streaming together here on Call Red Plays Raid Shadow Legends. It's a lot of fun. I think it's one of my favorite streams to hang out with Sun and just kind of be silly and enjoy the game and talk to all of the viewers. So I hope you come and check it out. In addition, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and consider joining our Discord community. I truly appreciate all the support. Now let's get to the video. So there are two things that I like to do at the beginning of every champion training tournament and event, and you need to do both of those on the tournament or event page. So make sure that you come here before you get started and do these things. The first thing is you want to look at the reward track and just figure out your objective in terms of points. So for instance, on my HH Challenge account, which is a low-level account, I'll be going for the first set of 50 Blade Master points, which is the third reward up the column. That allows me to determine how much time and energy I'm going to need to invest in order to get my chosen reward. Now on my main account here, which is Endgame, uh, level 100 free-to-play account, I'm going to be going up to at least the 90-50. I want to get all 150 Blade Master points. And since I'm already up that high, I may consider going for the Legendary Tome because Legendary Tomes are extremely valuable. Above that, you can decide if you are interested, for instance, in this case, going into the tournament and competing for the free champion here. The Nair Gigante Archer is a reward for the first place player. And then also, if you have the champion, you could get a six star soul instead. So as you can see, the point totals there are pretty crazy. That's usually for spenders, whales, krakens. Um, but if you are competing for that, then that's going to change your perspective in terms of your objectives and the investment that you're going to need to complete your objective. So regardless of how low or how high you're going in terms of rewards, it's really good to know your objective ahead of time. Now, the second thing you want to do is figure out where the points are coming from, because it's not the same for every tournament and event. So go to the info tab here and you can see that there are four sources of points for this particular tournament. You can level up champions upgrade champions ranks, ascend champions, and use skill tomes. Now for me, in this particular tournament, I will not be using skill tomes, and that's because skill tomes are also valuable during CVCs, and sometimes you even have a champion training tournament during a CVC, although usually they don't let you double dip that way on tomes, so they're typically going to have an event that doesn't give you points for tomes, but still I'm going to hold mine for CVC. So I have three other ways of getting points. Now as far as ascending champions are concerned, let's look at that first. This is the least significant. 
it's a good way to get a few extra points onto champions, especially champions you're going to keep if you have a lot of affinity potions. So if you have a lot of affinity potions, this can get you maybe a few hundred points, maybe even a thousand points. And that takes the burden off of the other sources of points a little bit. So that can be nice. So sometimes I like to just plan out how many champions I'm likely to ascend early on. So I know how many points I'm going to get from this source. Sometimes it will be zero. Sometimes I won't ascend to anybody. So that's just something to consider. But the two big sources of points are going to be level upgrades and rank upgrades. And as you can see, at any particular star level, the points for leveling up and upgrading the rank are roughly the same. You get a few more points for leveling rather than increasing an, uh, a rank. So for instance, at three stars, you get two points per level. You're going to go up 29 levels, right? Because you go from one to 30. So 29 times two is 58 points. And then when you rank that champion up from three stars to four stars, you get 50 points. So 59 points or 58 points versus 50 points, roughly the same. And that's pretty much true at every level. A few more points for levels and if, you know, close to that for ranks. Now I will say one thing that you can do here. Uh, <clears throat> now I will say that one thing you can do in terms of rank upgrades is you can prepare food ahead of time, right? If you have a reason to be running campaign, in between champion training tournaments or during the last champion training tournament, you don't necessarily want to overshoot on points on your objectives. So again, if I'm going up to 11,000 points, I may not want to keep going past that point. I don't want to waste champion training points. So I may have champions that I have leveled up that I could rank up, but I don't need the points from the rank ups. So I'm going to hold those rank upgrades for the next champion training tournament or event. So just throw them back in the vault. So for this particular tournament, I may pull out a two-star champion who's level 20 that's in my vault, run them up all the way to four-star level 40, and then put them back in the vault because I don't need them as a five-star chicken just yet. So now that we have chosen our objective in terms of points, I want to talk about the four different ways that you can get experience onto your champions. The reason this is so important is because that's where you're going to spend the majority of your time during champion training, right? The other three sources of points for this tournament are ascensions, promotions and putting skill tomes on a champion all of which happen nearly instantaneously in the tavern it's really quick but the rest of the time you're going to spend grinding experience now the primary source of experience for champions is any content that grants experience as a reward most commonly it's going to be campaign that's generally your best place to farm up champions however you could also run your champion in dungeon content or even in uh, faction crypts. Faction crypts actually grant some very little XP. Now you don't get any XP from Clan Boss, Hydra Boss, or Doom Tower. I'm not sure about Centranos. Actually, if you know, do we get experience in Centranos? You can let me know in the comments below, and then we can share that with everybody. Okay, so after running content, we have three other sources of experience. Now two of them happen in the tavern here. You can take any champion, and you can consume another champion just like you would a brew here. So this is the second source of experience. It's pretty resource intensive. It's not terribly efficient, but we are going to use this method just a tiny bit to kind of streamline the whole process and save ourselves some time. The, the third way to get experience is actually to use brews or barrels. So consumables that actually grant a whole lot of experience. We're going to be using this as well. And we'll talk about that in another minute. Finally, the last way to get experience onto a champion is in the guardian ring. And you can go to the sparring pit you can unlock these five slots that will then put XP passively over time on any champion that you place in the sparring pit. Now, this is probably the slowest method, but it's also a method that you can use when you're away from the game. This keeps counting up even if you are logged out. So this can be a nice way to get a lot of experience onto your roster without any real effort or investment from you. It's completely free. It just takes time. Primarily, if you are a player who logs in frequently, this is going to be more beneficial. And if you only log in like once a day or you take days off from raid, if you're pretty casual, this is not going to be as beneficial, but it can still benefit pretty much everybody. So if you have some gems and you haven't invested in this yet, I highly recommend you take your five slots up to like slot level one. Don't promote them past one right away. It's more important to have more slots open at level one than it is to promote them up. You get a worse return at level two and an even worse return at level three. It's faster, but in terms of the gems you're investing, it's not as worthwhile an investment. So now we have these four methods of gaining XP that we can mix and match to create an overall method 
to complete our champion training in the easiest, best way for our particular account. So for instance, you may have a whole lot of mystery shards, or you may be really short on mystery shards. And so if you have a lot of mystery shards, you might use up, you know, the one star and two star champions as like XP food, like mini brews. If you don't have that many mystery shards, you don't want to do that and you would rather use energy. If you have a lot of energy, you're probably going to farm campaign a lot more. If you have a ton of brews, you're going to use the brew trick in the tavern. And you always want to be using the guardian ring. And you may even design a specific approach to the guardian ring that is going to supplement your other three sources of experience to create a really nice synergy that's super efficient or less time intensive. So now I'm going to walk you through my methods and give you a little bit of a breakdown of some adjustments you can make depending on the resources that you have. So the most likely place you are to farm XP on your champions is here in campaign at 12-3 Brutal. Now, if you don't know, the reason we farm 12-3 Brutal is because it's the best, most efficient combination of time, energy, and silver. Shields sell for a little bit more silver than the other artifacts, so that's generally better. If you were going for pure XP efficiency, you would farm stage 12-6. The reason we do Brutal and not Nightmare, because Brutal still drops Mystery Shards, which is great because we need those for champion training. And also, it's just a lot faster. So generally, in terms of time, Brutal is better than Nightmare, although Nightmare is actually more efficient in terms of energy. Now, if you were going to spend significant time farming XP here in campaign, you need to know a couple of things. One is that you will always overshoot the XP mark. You never land perfectly on the XP that you need to max out any star champion. So level 10 for one stars, 20 for two stars, 30 for three stars. You're always going to waste some experience. So there's actually a combination of runs that you can do that is going to be more efficient. And you need to kind of memorize that or write it down or something for each different star level. So for a one star champion, you could run three runs here in Brutal, but you're going to waste about 3000 experience per champion. So rather than doing three runs here in Brutal, you do two runs in Brutal and then you drop down to hard and you do one run in hard. And that way you only waste a few hundred experience instead of 3000 experience. Now for two star champions, you're going to run them up to level 19 here in Brutal, and then you're actually going to drop down to Normal. Now, Normal is only going to take four energy, so you're going to save four energy per run, as opposed to with one-star champions, where you save two energy per run. But if you're trying to be very efficient with your energy, you just want to drop down that difficulty to whatever difficulty is going to complete the last level on your champions. So again, for one-star champions, you want to drop down to Hard. For two-star tra champions, you drop down to Normal. For three-star champions, you drop down to Hard. And for four star champions, you would drop down to normal, but really you also have another option. You don't have to necessarily even use that last bit of energy to complete the last level. But let's go talk about another way that you can get experience onto your champions. So here we are in the guardian ring at the sparring pit. Now this is a really great place to get experience for very cheaply onto your champions. Remember that you probably want to open slot one for all five slots first. You don't want to level up your slots. Like it's better to have five slots at level one, then one or two slots at level three. Um, each level up is less efficient than the one below it. So the best, most efficient level in terms of gem investment for experience return is going to be at slot level one. Quick note about this. If you're a player who doesn't log in very often, this is going to be much less efficient. You want to have at least 60 or 70 percent efficiency here to really make this worthwhile which means if you have a champion who's sitting here for hours upon hours upon hours and you're not logging in to click them and get them onto their next level, it's not really a great place to do this. However, what we were just talking about is just maxing out a champion who is like at level eight or level 19 or 29 or 39, right? It's level eight for one star champions because you jump over level nine when you max them out. So as you can see here, I actually have a level nine one star champion and she is leveling up from level 9 to 10. And you can see it takes a, a while. It takes almost two hours um, to do that. So it's not fast, but it's super efficient because it literally takes no resources. You've already spent the gems to unlock this. So now forever after, you just have a source of free experience. And the great thing about this is you could also like walk away and it keeps going. You don't have to, you know, for the next two hours, this is just going to be gaining experience. So if you want to take your 19s to 20 or your 29s to 30 in here, it can be a really efficient way to do that. Now, another way that you can level up a champion is by sacrificing other champions to max out a champion. So here's that level nine champion. This is currently the champion that's in the guardian ring. But if I wanted to complete her right away, 
you see I need about 5,100 experience. And so I could go ahead and throw four champions, four one-star champions onto her. Now, in fact, that is also true for these level eights. And if I did a level eight, it's, it's four champions. So if you do two runs of Brutal 12-3 with a one-star champion, you need four additional one-star champions to max them out. And then remember, you need a fifth champion to actually promote them to two stars. So I would say that this is the most wasteful way to do it, but it's fast, right? Because this is basically four mystery shards that I don't have to throw away. So if I have a ton of extra mystery shards, or if I need to pull mystery shards for like a champion chase or a summon rush or something, then I could go ahead and use this method. But generally, I don't use this method that much unless I'm in a real hurry because it is very wasteful. So much more commonly, I will level this eight to 10 either in the sparring pit or in the campaign on uh, 12, three hard. Now this is also true for two stars at 19 or three stars at 29 or four stars at 39. There's going to be some number of one star champions you can sacrifice to complete them. So in this case for a level 29 that I've run up only in brutal campaign, I can just go ahead and use two one star champions and that would max it out. I might do that again here if I didn't care about my mystery shards or I was in a hurry. Or again, if I was trying to save energy, because I could go and use four energy in campaign 12, three normal and level up three, 20, level 29, three stars all the way up to level 30. But I could also do that for four energy, three champions, right? That's not bad. I'm actually saving six mystery shards by spending four energy that way. So I'd probably do that or again, throw this champion into the sparring pit. So if we come over here to the sparring pit and throw this same level 29 champion in, you can see this is actually relatively quick. It's only 31 and a half minutes to go from level 29 to, 20, to 30. So again, you can pick the combination of these different methods that works best for you in terms of your time in game, your resource investment, depending on if you're strong with bruise, strong with energy, or what have you. So it's entirely up to you what combo you use. But now let's talk about the most powerful and quickest method, which is the brew trick. Okay, so when you are ranking up any champion, let's say I'm going to rank up this three-star champion, I'm going to use food champions to do that in most cases. I'm not using chickens, I'm using food champions. So I can throw these three champions in as food. But right now they are all level one, which means they are not giving me any champion training points. So I can go ahead and level them before I use them up, and that's going to give me points on these champions, which can help me in the champion training. So you always want to level up your food. Now, you could do this in campaign. You could put some levels on these champions in campaign. You could say, I'm going to run them through two brutal 12 threes. And if you have a lot of energy and a lot of time, that's great. But if you're short on time or energy, or you just have a lot of brews, this can be the fastest, easiest method to gain tons of points. So what you would do here is you would switch up to upgrade level, and then you would go looking for your food champions. So I want to level up some three-star food champions. And so I'm going to pick them. And I'm just going to throw a certain number of brews onto the champion. Now, for each star champion, it's different. So for instance, let's say I wanted to level up a two-star champion as food. I personally don't put any brews on a two-star champion. But you could put a single brew. A single brew gets you 10 levels, and that's not bad on a two-star champion. That's a decent number of points. I personally just don't put brews on two-star champions. That's my particular adjustment to this method. But if you really needed points and you were running low on champions, you would want to do this, right? You can see how many brews I have. I'm not going to run out of brews. I'm also not going to run out of mystery shards. So I'm not going to do this with two-star champions, but you certainly could, and it's decent points. Now, my personal method is for three-star food champions, I put two brews on that champion. That's going to get me 15 points, which is basically half leveling. Remember that your first brew will always get you the most points. So if I actually just put one brew on this champion, you can see I'm getting 10 levels from the first brew. And when I go to the second brew, I'm only getting five levels. And every single level gives me the same number of points. So five levels is obviously not as good as 10 levels. So if you want to be really stingy with your brews, just do one on any champion. If you want to get pretty good value and do you know more levels more quickly, then you go ahead and put two brews on a three-star champion. Again, this is just the number of brews that I like to use, and I'm going to walk you up through all of the different stars. Okay, so let's talk about a four-star food champion. Now, that, again, just my method. What I would do on a four-star champion, if I'm trying to save brews, is I go two brews. Now, you'll see this actually gets the champion up to level 14, 
But then if I just do one one star champion, that goes up to 15. So that's a good return for that one mystery shard. So I would actually do two brews and one one star champion. However, if I'm not trying to save brews or I'm trying to save mystery shards, let's say, I would actually go with four brews on a four star champion. And that takes me just perfectly to level 21, which is also a good return on points. So you can experiment with how many brews or the combination of brews and one star champions you need to put on at various star levels to get the number of points that makes the most sense for you. If you really need a ton of points and you don't have a lot of champions, you may want to use up more brews. Or if you're trying to save on mystery shards or what, you know, you mix and match. Basically, you mix and match these different methods to find the most efficient way for you. And then once you kind of have a method, you're likely to just know it by heart and use it really easily. It's going to come quickly to you. Okay, so finally, let's talk about a five star food champion. So if you've brought a champion up to five stars and intend to turn them into a chicken, you can still get a lot of points out of a five star because you actually get more points the higher star level the champion is who's food. So in this particular case, I have two, two different numbers I like to use. The first one is I put five brews on a five star champion. And again, you can see it almost maxes out. And then I put a one star champion and I get 23 levels here. So this is more brew intensive, but you get a lot of points for these 23 levels. If I'm, if I have a lot of brews and I want to burn even more brews, I'll go up to eight and that gets you right at level 28. I've even heard of people who like to go up to 10, which gives you 30. I think eight is more efficient because you're not wasting a half a level. Um, so either five and one one star champion or eight brews. Um, but you could also do less. You don't have to go up that high. You could just say, I want to get, you know, the first couple of levels, maybe two brews, and that would be enough. Again, you have to figure out what's best for you and your resources and your account. Okay, so that is it for how to complete a champion training event. Again, remember the first thing you want to do is set that objective very clearly. Two, know where the points are coming from. And then three, pick a combination of these four ways to get experience onto your champions so that you're not wasting resources. Again, you should never really be consuming chicken champions, like champions as chickens, without putting some levels on them and getting some XP value out of them. Even though, as you saw, I usually don't do it with two-star champions, but you certainly could. Okay, I hope you have found this video helpful. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, or if you have a particular method that's maybe even more efficient than anything that I've mentioned, because I'm still learning too, and I like to hear about that kind of stuff. All right, thanks so much for hanging out. I have been Cole Red, and I will see you in another video soon.